Hello there everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about whether or not uh, salt runners, self-propelled treadmills, all of those arc treadmills that you see in your gym, maybe your CrossFit box or similar things like that, are harder than your traditional treadmill. So as you'll see as I share my conditioning, a lot of the times I'm doing my conditioning on an assault treadmill in my gym, and a common question I get all the time is, is that thing actually harder than a regular treadmill or road running? Because man, is it hard. So I wanna cover that today. I wanna go through a few studies that have actually looked into this. So before we get started, if you enjoy my channel, you're learning something and you like this video, go ahead and do me a favor right now, hit like and subscribe to help support my channel. And if you learned something, let me know below. So with that being said, there are basically two types of treadmills that you will see in an exercise physiology lab, which is what I work in during my PhD, master's and undergrad work. So I've been working in exercise physiology labs with traditional treadmills for years and or the newer edition of self-propelled or self-motorized based treadmills. And so we do have one in my lab. We never got around to doing the study on it during my time here uh, due to lockdown restrictions on human subjects research. But traditionally in exercise physiology labs or gyms or sports performance training, you essentially have always ran on road or a treadmill. But in the last uh, five, six years, the introduction of self-motorized treadmills has kind of like made its wave in the fitness sphere. And a question that comes along with that is, are these things actually harder and how do they differ or stand up to actual treadmills? And luckily for us, while we may feel like they're a little bit harder in our training or love them, hate them, however we feel, science has actually turned to look for that answer. So I'm gonna cover a few studies today that exercise physiologists, much like myself, have done and looked at these differences in training here. And so I wanna chat with you about these and talk about first though, what's the difference between these two things? So a regular treadmill is a belt that is motorized, which means that you are forced to run the speed of which you select the intensity or the incline or whatever that is in the treadmill. So no matter what you kind of feel, you are forced to do whatever the treadmill is set to unless you personally decide to change it. So it's a little different than you've probably noticed if you run on road or trail or track, where you kind of can adjust your pace or auto-regulate it based on how you feel or you know intensity, duration of the run, you might get faster or slower just depending um, across the run. So your pace may not be linear like this. It might kind of go like this throughout your run and that's pretty normal and natural. Um, obviously some of us are better at pacing themselves. You might be having certain zones or intensities you're trying to hit, but in general, like you can oscillate around that and self-adjust based off how you feel. We're on a motorized treadmill. You are essentially locked into the workload that you are saying that you're going to do. So it kind of forces as you if you are running at six miles an hour you're running at six miles an hour there's no adjusting to 5.8 or 6.1 based on how you feel you are running six unless you personally make the choice to adjust it up or down where these self motorized treadmills or you know a treadmill where essentially you are the motor you are the one driving and moving the belt they it, they bring in and factor in the like your ability to self-regulate and pace and control it because you are the motor, you yourself are the motor. And so these are a little bit different from treadmills in the sense that the belt is just one continuous loop and you are the one who's driving it forward. And so you're acting essentially as that motor where you can speed up or slow down depending on how you feel. And so these are essentially treadmills that are kind of on an arc. So they kind of have an uphill slant. So you're essentially running against that slight grade while you're running, but the closer you run to the front, the faster it kind of goes and then the further you run back, the slower you kind of are and so you almost have to be on that increased grade um, toward the front of the treadmill in order to keep it moving backwards and if you ran on one of these before you know exactly what this feels like so if you ran on these then you might be thinking to yourself yeah it's a lot harder and so there's actually studies that support this and show this and so let's chat about it so the first study I want to look at is a study that is by Schoenmaker and Reed, I might have got that name wrong. We'll put the study here for you to see the citation. It's called The Physiological and Perceptual Demands of Running on a Curved, Non-Motorized Treadmill and the Implications for Self-Pace Training. And so this study essentially wanted to look at how people can self-pace by using these treadmills and how much it affects that. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, I'm a really big fan of RPE and uh, self-perceived -per based intensity training, both for lifting and running but your ability to do that might be affected by these and that's what the studies wanted to look at. So this study looked at 13 trained males. So yes, a lot of studies are done on males. This is very traditional in the field of exercise physiology. And while I am forcing back on that and trying to do things like that, I would assume in the context of a study like this, the results would be pretty similar, pretty applicable to women as well. While it'd be great if they included female in studies like this where 
it really, there's no excuse not to. In general, I would say that this is a safe assumption for all people, um, just because the measures that they're looking at might slightly be affected by things, but not so much so that the overall trends might not be totally true when you go across sexes. So keeping that in mind that this probably holds similarly true for most people, but yes, most exercise physiology studies unfortunately are done in men. So 13 trained men went through VO2 max tests. And so a VO2 max test is a way for us to essentially test the maximal oxygen consumption that someone can use and at one given time through incremental graded exercise. So it increasingly gets harder until people can't go anymore. And that's the short story of it. And so they wanted to look at VO2 max when that occurred and basically the maximal velocity or the speed of which these participants were going at that point in time. Once they established that maximal velocity from that first test, they also had participants go through a incremental exercise bout where they exercised for four minutes at a time, um, increasingly harder percentages of that maximal velocity that they achieved. So for between 40 and then 90% of their maximum velocities, they had them do these incremental bouts with little bits of rest in between um, and basically to see how these things differed between the regular treadmill and the self-motorized treadmill. So in this study, one of the more important findings that allows us to kind of confirm that the rest of the data is good data and confirms what we're looking at is that when we had participants come back in the lab and do their incremental running at different locked in velocities on whether it was the motorized treadmill or the self motorized treadmill, essentially they were no different. So those velocities were the same. So essentially they were running just as fast on each type of treadmill. And that allows you to know that they were kind of doing similar speeds and intensities. You can think of it that way. And so that the metrics that were significantly different or were different between types of treadmill were due to the treadmill itself and not the intensity the participant was exercising at. So one of the more interesting findings of this study is that when exercising at the same intensity in the two different types of treadmill, participants were exercising at a higher VO2 max at that same relative intensity, which is a fancy way of saying they were working harder, they needed to consume more oxygen to sustain the same level of exertion intensity. And this is also matched by them having higher elevated heart rate, RPE and lower running economy. So essentially running on the self motorized treadmill was both harder and less efficient compared to that of the regular motorized treadmill, which is kind of the standard of what you see in exercise science research or gyms or labs or general testing. So on average, running on the self motorized treadmill appears to have a increase in VO2 max of about 32%, which is not only significant, but pretty meaningful when it comes to how hard something might feel. And this is matched with an increased caloric expenditure of 38% compared to a regular motorized treadmill. And so I know that a lot of people jump to that type of conclusion and think to themselves, well, that means I'm burning more calories, so I should be using continuous motorized treadmills. And that's not necessarily true because if you have a performance outcome type of goal, you don't necessarily want things to be less efficient depending on what you're looking at. And so that doesn't mean that you should also not train on these. If your goal is to have performance metrics, it just keeping in mind that these things are harder, they are going to feel harder and or it's gonna be harder for you to perform at the same relative intensity. So if you remember the whole purpose of the study and the title of it was looking at basically how um, runners can self pace and self select intensities because it is different between these types of treadmills. And so the recommendation for me and from the study for you would be that if you were going to use one of these types of treadmills, you would essentially just back off your intensity, your RPE to match at a slower velocity. So you would basically go at the same, I guess, not a lower intensity, but a lower velocity, a lower speed, whatever it is that you're doing, which would be the same relative intensity. And so there's a few other studies that have also looked at this that are very interesting that we'll kind of add here to add more context to this. But I think this is probably one of the most impactful and important um, when it comes to what a lot of you are feeling and reporting to me when you see me running these treadmills. So yes, these treadmills are about 30% harder to run on than a standard motorized treadmill. And one of the reasons that we think this might be true is because of that slight in kind when makes it a little bit harder, but also you are being forced to move the belt yourself. So you do have a slightly less efficient running, um, which is important. Running economy is important. We wanna be economic runners. Essentially, it means that it's less hard to do the same amount of work. That's that's, that's really important, right? Like I can make a car analogy here, but I don't know if enough about cars to not mess it up, but it's almost like having a more efficient engine in your car and going at the same speed, right? It probably uses less gas. Someone tell me if that's totally incorrect, but I think that's how it works. But with that being said, let's look at a couple other studies that kind of match these results or parallel them looking at slightly different things to see how this might actually play out into some of our performance. 
So similar to this study, the findings of another study called Increased Physiologic Intensity During Walking and Running on a Non-Motorized Curved Treadmill looked at 10 regular healthy athletic adults. And what they did is they had them walk versus run on the treadmill, and they found similar things. They found that the amount of physiological effort required to sustain the same pace on these self-motorized treadmills was harder, so RPE was higher, exertion was higher, measures of physiological stress during exercise were elevated. And so it's important to note that if you're a scientist, a clinician, people working with participants getting athletes back to sport that these things might be harder and so it might be a way to progress things and or keeping in that in mind again matching that kind of general recommendation of backing off the speed of what you're doing to match the desired intensity because that physiological stress or intensity of it is going to be slightly harder and lastly two other studies looking at 5k performance on these treadmills versus motorized treadmill one called the validity of an endurance running performance on the curve 3TM non-motorized treadmill, as well as another study called five kilometer time trial reliability of a non-motorized treadmill compared to the physiological and perceptual responses of a motorized treadmill. So again, 5Ks on motorized treadmills versus self-propelled non-motorized treadmills. And these studies both found that 5K performance, so similar to that of like a 3.1 mile run, the races that are really, really popular, was lower on these treadmills, upward of 24% slower. So keep that in mind if you are someone using these. Um, the practical application to take away from these is that your time of your miles, your, your 5Ks, any running that you're doing on these treadmills is probably going to be a little bit slower and a little bit harder. So to wrap up all these studies, essentially this is just a big fancy way of saying that yes, self-motorized treadmills, assault treadmills, treadmills, treadmills that you're seeing that are slightly curved and you're the one who's having to run on them specifically are going to be physiologically harder to perform at. And so if the best recommendation I can give to you is to slow down your intensity and pace um, to what your goal and desired intensity would be. So since it's going to be a little bit harder, simply accounting for that in the workouts that you're doing. I personally like the assault treadmill in my gym. I like doing my running intervals on it. It makes doing conditioning workouts where you're moving between multiple things really easy, but I also like to do road running as well. And so I kind of mix most modalities in my training, but sometimes the motorized treadmill is just more convenient. And sometimes convenience is an important factor, but knowing that these things are harder allows us to make sure we're hitting our exercise prescriptions appropriately, especially if you have certain prescriptions and intensity. So one example of this is that right now I'm doing 400 meter repeats as part of my program. And on this, I can tell that even though I have general goal paces of what I want to hit, they are going to simply be slower than what that is because I know that it is just a little bit harder to run at that treadmill. It's going to feel harder at the same or greater intensities as it would be in a road or flat surface or a track or whatever it is. And so I'm simply just aware of this. So I'm not getting mad at myself or shaming myself or being frustrated with my performance, but instead I'm just looking at my general intensity output and consistency week to week on the same modality. And then keeping that awareness that if you transition from a self-motorized treadmill to road or track intervals for whether it's running performance, a CrossFit wad, anything like that, that there might be some discrepancies there as well. And we get used to the things that that we train on and we practice on and you might have to adjust to shifting off but it might be a little bit easier or you know you might notice that when you're training so just being aware of that so with it all being said i hope that was insightful i hope you learned something and i hope you have some appreciation that these questions that we have Generally, there's real scientists looking in labs to see if this is real or true because these things impact um, athlete performance in a lot of ways, but athletes are also gen pop and that is you. So if you're watching this and you have an assault treadmill and you are afraid to use it or you hate it, I encourage you to try it. I mean, I think it's a great way to challenge yourself. It can be an amazing erg, which are just like cardio machines to use in the gym. And I personally love it in a way that I think most people don't, but it does make the things that you're doing harder and that's okay. So don't bring shame into the conversation when you're looking at your running paces or intensities ever, but especially if you're on an assault based treadmill, it is harder and you are increasing the VO2 demand and caloric expenditure and even time to completion all the way upward of like 30% for almost all of those metrics. So keeping in mind that, yeah, it's not just in your head. Those things are actually harder. So if you appreciate this video, you liked it, you learned something, you found it a little bit insightful to something that you might be thought just was in your head, let me know. Go ahead and like and subscribe, please, to my YouTube channel if you're excited for more. And let me know if you love or hate assault treadmills or self-motorized treadmills below. We'll catch you on the next video.